hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So, months ago, my friend Amanda at The Naughty Librarian uh, challenged me to do the Do I Have That Book challenge. And considering that I'm about to move and therefore about to start packing up all of my books, I thought that, you know, I should take the opportunity right now to uh, go ahead and see if I can, uh, if I can accomplish this challenge while all my books are still available for me to look at. Now, I have not actually watched this video yet because I gather that they talked about the prompts and part of the fun of this is just like going off the cuff and seeing if you have the thing that you're supposed to have in the moment. So, I'm going to reposition us to be more fully looking at my shelves, and uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, and sorry for the wardrobe change. It is actually so cold in here because I cannot turn my heater on without it making the same sounds as the boiler in A Christmas Story. It is so loud and so obnoxious, so I just freeze and am now wearing literally four layers. So anyway, apologies for that. But let's get into the first question, which is, do you have a book with deckled edges? And like, girl, yeah, duh. The one that comes to mind right now is Dread Nation, which is right here. You can see deckled edges. This is actually a very beautiful physical object, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I love the cover, deckled edges. Super nice book. So yes, I definitely have plenty of books with deckled edges. Question number two is, do you have a book with three or more people on the cover? Three or more, yeah, people on the cover. Now, if this was two or more people on the cover, it would be so easy because like all romance novels for the most part have two people like making out on the cover. Oh God, I like this one. Alona Andrews is such a good writer and this is a, such a good series that deserves better covers than these like very fake drawn on looking abs. He must be so cold. He's in the middle. Anyway, I have plenty of ones like this. In terms of three or more people, I guess I could cheat and go with something like the Canterbury Tales because like there's these little, there's two different dudes. Yeah, two different dudes on the cover, but they're just repeating. So it's technically a lot of people. I'm trying to think of one where there's actually three different characters on the cover. It's kind of hard to think of like, a group ensemble. Oh, ooh, Monstrous. Volume two, The Blood, uh, has Mika, Kippa, and Ren. Yeah, those are all their names on the cover. So yes, three different characters on the cover. Also a bird, and in this world, I'm sure that this is like a sentient being, so really four. Yeah, there's just like people all over this one. So yeah, this one definitely counts. Okay, question three is, do you have a book that is based off of another book? And I guess you could think of that like spinoff style. So that, I mean, like Iron and Magic is a spinoff of the main Kate Daniels series. But I don't, I think that this is probably more of like a retelling type situation. So um, the one that comes immediately to mind is, are you impre I'm impressed at how much I'm able to stay facing you. Um, White Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre from Bertha Mason's POV. Uh, another one that comes to mind is Heartstone by L. Catherine White. I talk about this book so much. Um, and it is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but with dragons. And it's awesome. So yeah, I have plenty of retelling. So lots of books based on other books. Okay, so then question four is, do you have a book with a title that is 10 letters long? And I'm sure that I do. Um, I'm trying to think of maybe like a two word title. So like the something maybe would be a good route for this. Bad Blood, that's eight. The Witch Elm. That's three, five, three, that's 11. The Travels, that would be three, six, 10. The Travels, ha ha, by Marco Polo. Here we go. That's right, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yes, that does work. Guys, I was an accounting major. It is uh, pitiful, my math skills. Oh, oh, would one of the magic ones work? Yeah, okay, Magic Bites would work too. So that's, that's another one, because that's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, Magic Bites, that would also work. Okay, question number five is, do you have a book with a title that starts and ends with the same letter? I mean, the answer I'm sure is yes, but let's sit here and think. Again, 
the is a good thing. I mean, I guess I could just literally sit here and scroll through through my titles here. I'm trying to think of something that starts in with a T. That might be a good. Oh, hey, by the way, train wreck right here uh, is a one word 10 letter title. So there you go. Side note there. I'm having a hard time like thinking of a good strategy on this one. I'm trying to think because I feel like vowels and Y are good, are often like the ending of something. Also like an N maybe. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of like a strategy here of what titles to be looking for, or maybe like an S, like a plural. So like maybe something that starts with an S and then ends also with an S. I found one. The, that was the right strategy. Okay. That's the wrong book. I grabbed the wrong one. That was very anticlimactic. Okay. Sorry. The Eris Effect, T, T by Courtney Milan. This is the second in her, oh gosh, what is this called? The Brothers Sinister series, which is a really, really good historical romance series. I definitely recommend starting with The Duchess War. Also, aren't the covers beautiful? Like, I like that they're just pretty dresses and not like people making out. I appreciate that. So anyway, this is my, my first one I could find that will satisfy this challenge. Number six is, do you have a mass market paperback book? And like, honestly, this is probably the hardest of all of them so far because I have very few. I tend to essentially look at my mass markets as almost like library loaners. Like I'll get a couple of them sometimes from the used bookstore, but they like go right back. So they all live on the bookshelf that's over here that you guys don't normally see. So just a second. Okay, I could find two right now. Both of these will go back to the used bookstore once I've read them. One is Nora Roberts' Carolina Moon. This is like one of her standalone thrillery things. And then Molly Harper's How to Run with a Naked Werewolf because actually, you know what? I think that my the Nashville Library does have this series. So I actually might be able to go ahead and take this back to the used bookstore because I can get it from the library, so the more you know. Okay, number seven is do you have a book by an author using a pen name? I mean, yes. Several of the people we've already talked about are our pen names, Nora Roberts, Courtney Milan, Alona Andrews. I'm trying to think if there's one I've not talked about yet who would be a good example of somebody who uses a pen name. Oh, I've got a classic example, George Eliot. A lot of people don't know. This is a lady, Mary Ann, forget what her last name is, but George Eliot was a pseudonym for a lady author in the Victorian era, so yes. Pen name. Cool question number eight is, do you have a book with a character's name in the title? I mean, so many, yes. I mean, like, how about Oliver Twist and David Copperfield, Charles Dickens, name in title. Number nine is, do you have a book with two maps in it? That's actually a kind of tricky one because I'm trying to think of a circumstance in which you'd need more than one? I don't know, let me think about this. Okay, I think the answer is no. Oh, you know what? Maybe the Silmarillion edition I have, let me go check. Okay, I have a big, pretty illustrated copy of the Silmarillion. So let's look in the table of contents and see if we have multiple maps on here, possibly. I mean, if anybody like is a map maker, I mean, Lord knows that Tolkien is down for a good map. He's down for a good invented language. He's down for, ooh, ooh. Okay, yeah, so we got one, I got one big ass map. I totally forgot this was back here. Okay, I got one big ass map of Middle Earth. So there's that, that's one. So if I can find another one in this thing, then this might be it. Yeah, if there's anything that Tolkien loves more than a map, it's a like index or glossary of a made up language with weird little like made up runes for the language. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe even this doesn't have multiple maps. Okay, so I'm gonna say that the answer is no. I don't have something like that. Okay, number 10 is, do you have a book that was turned into a TV show? Now, if we were talking ebooks, the first thing that would come to mind for me would be I have True Blood. That was turned into a TV show. I mean, if mini series count, then like, sure, I've got Cranford. That was a mini series. Uh, Pride and Prejudice. 
another mini series, like any number of my Agatha Christie's have been, oh, okay, yeah, 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 let's do that. Agatha Christie, all of the David Suchet ones, let me go grab one. Murder on the Orient Express was an episode of the David Suchet version on ITV of the Poirot series, so there you go. Okay, number 11 is do you have a book by somebody who is originally famous for something else besides writing, so like celebrity of some kind, basically. Uh, yeah. Oh, what about my favorite memoir? Well, not my favorite memoir, but one of my favorite memoirs, which is My Life in France by Julia Child. Julia Child was originally famous for being uh, the woman who brought French cooking to America. And she has like one of the most beautiful memoirs I've ever read. Okay, question 12 is do you have a book with a clock on the cover? And I'm sure the answer is yes. Um, oh, I know over here. Let's see if I can find it. Ha ha, yes. I remember that I have a philosophy book called Time as History by George Grant and the entire cover is a clock. Number 13 is do you have a poetry book? Yes, I do. Uh, up here where you guys I don't think can see. How about this? Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. Lots of, I have uh, a bunch of these uh, penguin cloth bound poetry classics. And here's one of them. Number 14, do you have a book with an award stamp on it? And absolutely I do. The first one that comes to mind is The Perilous Guard, which is this one right here. It is a Newbery Honor Book winner. This is a fantastic, I feel like, lost classic of YA, and it has Faye, and it's set during like the end of Mary's reign and the beginning of Elizabeth I's reign and it's super good. Okay, so number 15 is a little hard to, for me to answer because it's do you have a book by an author with the same initials as you? And I don't go by the name that I go by IRL on here. Like Mara is my first name, but that's not the name I normally go by. So even if I was thinking about M plus that initial, I don't think so, I mean, Maybe, but I definitely, the name I go by, those initials, I do not have a book with those initials. So there you go. Number 16 is, do you have a book of short stories? I have so many books of short stories. Uh, let's think here. Difficult Women, we could do that. The Thing Around Your Neck by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have not read anything from her besides like her nonfiction. So I'm hoping that this will be my first foray into fiction with her, so. Yes, for sure. 17 is, do you have a book that is between 500 and 510 pages long? Which is so specific. And I probably do. I remember the Witch Elm being like right around 500 page. Ooh, ooh, was this gonna be? Yeah, baby, my first try, 509 pages. The Witch Elm. I remembered it being like just at 500 pages. Nice. That was, did you see that real time? That was quick. Number 18 is, do you have a book that was turned into a movie? And yes, so many. I mean, just up here. Why in the Witch in the Wardrobe? C.S. Lewis. Multiple movies, some better than others. Number 19 is, do you have a graphic novel? Yes, we already talked about Monstrous. And then, is this where I'm keeping? Yeah, this is. March. Okay, it's a pain in the ass to get out, but March. March is right here. Monstrous is here. I've got another one down here. I've got them. And the final question is, do you have a book written by two or more authors? Yeah, I definitely do. I mean, uh, Aluna Andrews comes to mind because this is a writing team. So there's two people writing under one pen name. In terms of like multiple people on the cover, the one that comes to mind is uh, Family Fortunes by Davidoff and Hall. Two names on this cover. Okay, so I think that's it for this challenge. I had, I think, I think I had 18 out of 20. So I think pretty good, all things considered. And uh, yeah, this was a fun way to look at my collection anew. And it was a nice way for me to spend some time with my books before I have to pack them all up temporarily and vamoose to the new house. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing some different books. Though I feel like I had some repeats in here from things you normally see. I don't know, whatever, it's all good. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. 
and I think that will do it. Hope you're having a lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.